Okay. So people are popping in. I just want to say welcome, everyone. Today's sessions are brought to you by Scribe America, a company dedicated to improving the delivery of care and quality of life for medical providers nation nationwide. Um, yeah, and next up, I have the honor to introduce Savannah Perry, a distinguished healthcare professional and speaker. Graduating from the University of Georgia in 2011, she pursued a career as a physician scientist, completing her studies at Georgia Regent University in 2014. With expertise in dermatology, um, Savannah strived in her role at August, Augusta GA based dermatology office. Having experienced the interview process firsthand, she offers valuable insights from both sides. And additionally, her unique perspective as a spouse is, as, um, of a medical resident brings depth to her understanding of healthcare. Savannah's commitment to um, helping others achieve their goals is evident through her website, the PA platform, for which I will actually send out on the chat box. Please let us welcome Savannah. Hey guys, thanks for having me. I'm excited to share a little bit about my job as a PA working in dermatology and what it kind of takes these days to get into PA school, what the application process looks like, if the PA route is something you may be considering, maybe you're not sure, that's okay. Uh, we'll talk about what it looks like and what the options are as a PA. So I have a presentation, let me get that up and then we will jump in. All right, here we go. So um, thank you for the introduction, Michael. Like he said, I am from Augusta, Georgia, and um, yeah, I've been a PA now for a very long time. So if we kind of go back to when I was in high school and thinking about what I wanted to do, which some of you may be in that same place right now, I wasn't really sure. I knew that I liked learning about science and I liked the idea of healthcare or working in medicine, but I wasn't really familiar with many healthcare professions other than doctor and nurse. Those are the two that I kind of knew about that I feel like everybody is familiar with that have been around forever. So I kind of started thinking, maybe I'll go to nursing school. Maybe I'll go to medical school. I don't know. I don't really want to think about it because I'm in high school. But when I got to UGA, I really had to decide and I went in as a biology major because that's kind of what we're told you should do if you want to be in medicine, just be a biology major, then you can do anything with that. But the truth is you can't really do much at all with that, except for go to graduate school. So I started as a biology major and started to kind of consider what my future was going to look like. And I spent a lot of time looking at a lot of different professions considering things I could do. Some of the things y'all have heard about, physical therapist, occupational therapist, dental school, working in research, teaching, what could I do with a biology degree? And then I remembered that in high school, my dad had mentioned to me this profession called a PA. He one time just had a sinus infection, wasn't feeling good, went in to see his normal doctor. They couldn't see him and had one of their associates see him who happened to be a physician assistant. And he had never seen a PA before. And, um, you know, my dad's always thinking about what, what I should do, right? And so he had come home and mentioned that I should consider becoming a PA, which at the time I brushed off. I thought, okay, sounds good, whatever and didn't think too much about it until I got to college and started looking at options. So that's when I started researching, what does that mean? What do PAs do? What does the schooling look like? What does the career look like, the lifestyle? What would I actually be doing as a PA? Because I had never met one. I had never seen a PA and didn't really know what they did. So during freshman year, it was rough. If any of y'all are in college, you know that Gen Chem life and trying to navigate all the classes and coursework and social life. It's a lot. And so by the end of freshman year, I had kind of narrowed down to either PA or medical school. Those are my choices. At that point, I had a year of my degree under my belt. It didn't make sense to switch to nursing. 
And I didn't really see myself as somebody who wanted to be in the nursing profession or have, um, you know, I tend to be a little blunt. I don't know if I could be, have that caring attitude as much that a nurse needs, but I've, I've learned a lot about that, um, working with nurses and learning from them. But I really just wanted to be diagnosing patients and involved in figuring out what was going on and making them better. So that's where I settled on PA or medical school. Um, I went home for the summer and I was able to shadow and at home I shadowed a PA and a doctor team. And that was an amazing experience because I really saw what both of them did. I was able to ask questions about their schooling, their training, and what they went through, and how they worked together, and how they worked with patients. And I really saw myself in the PA that I shadowed. Her name was Megan. Um, she was having these conversations with the doctor about the patient she was seeing. I saw how having multiple people involved in a patient's care just increased the quality that that patient was getting. They were getting more attention, more eyes on them, more help. And they both worked in hospital medicine. So we would go around to different hospitals, seeing all these patients. And it was just amazing. So I went back to school sophomore year set on PA. This is what I'm doing. And I never changed my mind. I never looked back and I've been happy with it ever since. So Getting back to UGA, I did my shadowing. Patient care experience is a big part of PA school application. So I became a CNA, worked as a CNA at a rehab hospital, got all my prerequisites done, did a bunch of volunteering. And we'll talk about going into PA school in a minute, but um, spent some time at UGA. It was great. If there are any Georgia fans watching, you know, we are national championships, had to put a, a game day picture in there, even though it was rainy. Um, Michael mentioned that I am married. I should have updated. He is done with residency. So my husband is a hospitalist. We went to college together. We are both biology majors. We kind of went through everything at the same time. And then he went to medical school while I went to PA school. And then uh, he works now as, as a hospitalist, which is great. So when it was time to apply to PA school, um, back when I applied, there were not quite as many programs. There are a lot more now, but it's still a very new profession. And so the application process for PA schools, if I, if you had asked me back in 2011, when I was applying like, hey, in 10 years, do you think this process will be easier and, and better for students and more streamlined the way that med school applications are? I would be like, yes, definitely. It's not. It's only gotten more complicated, unfortunately. So being a new profession, I think schools are still trying to figure out the best requirements to get the best students who are most prepared to take on this next step. But um, when I applied in 2011, I applied as a junior um, going into my senior year. My goal was to not have to take a gap year. And I had a little bit of a weird situation where I graduated in December, so I already had a semester off. but. Um, you know, I think gap years are fantastic and I was fully planning on taking one. When I applied, I was applying with the mindset of I'm not going to get in, like I'm not going to get in. I'm going to be taking a gap year, but let me just try and see what happens this year and you never know. And so that's kind of what I recommend now is if you are in the place where you're like, I don't know if I'm ready to apply or not. If you feel ready and you've met the requirements that the schools are looking for, just go for it. You'll hear things like people don't get accepted right out of undergrad or they don't want somebody this young. And that's not true. There are plenty of people getting accepted straight out of undergrad into PA school. But I applied to four programs. I listed my stats, which were pretty average for then and pretty average for now. Uh, I was given interviews at two programs and accepted at both of those. Luckily, I was able to move home, which was great. I lived at home for the first year of PA school, and then I got married. So I was in PA school. My husband was in med school. We got married in, after our first year and then um, stayed in Augusta. So I'm still there, but um, I started there in May of 2012. Talking about PA school a little bit. So most PAs programs are 24 to 36 months long. Mine was 27 months, which is basically two years and one summer semester. Um, 
you do the first half in the classroom, which is called didactic. And then the second half is your clinical rotations. That's the fun stuff where you're out working with patients and actually putting what you learned to good use. Um, and if anyone has questions, feel free to put them in the chat or let us know. Um, I think we're gonna do some Q&A afterwards. Um, but PA school is just very fast. It's such a different pace than undergrad where you have time off. In PA school, you're in class pretty much from eight to five every single day. Uh, most schools do have mandatory attendance, and so we had to be there, and we just kind of flew through the information uh, very quickly. So in comparison, my husband was in medical school at the time, and his first two years, he only had class from 8 to 12 every day. So they gave him a lot more study time, um, a lot more time out of the classroom to do things like research if they wanted to. But uh, we were doing a lot. And so PA school was fun. We had a great time. I don't know if anyone recognizes this lady in the picture on the side. If you follow me on social media, you know I'm a huge Swifty. So that's um, Taylor Swift's mom. We played flag football. We went on vacation together with my classmates who are still some of my very best friends. So it's not all bad, but it is a, a very intense time and it goes by very quickly. So I graduated from PA school in August of 2014. I had a job ready when I graduated and I went straight into working in dermatology, which I've been doing ever since. Um, I am in my second job as a dermatology PA. There we go. Um, so working in dermatology is a lot of fun. I had had a really great opportunity to shadow in dermatology before going to PA school. There was a PA in Athens who let me come shadow with her one afternoon a week for an entire year. So I'd seen a lot of dermatology going into PA school, but I kept an open mind and I was open to other things. I did like pretty much every specialty that I rotated in. Um, the only specialty I don't like is orthopedics, <laughs> which I know a lot of people love, but for me, broken bones make me want to pass out. So um, dermatology, I get to do procedures. I love surgical things. I love getting to do um, excisions and it's really fun to, I would love to be in an OR, but I didn't want the schedule of a surgery PA who is getting there really early on call all the time. One of the nice things about dermatology is our schedule is very nice. So there's a good work-life balance. People like to throw that around, but right now I do a mix of medical, cosmetic, and surgical dermatology. So on the medical side, I'm seeing things you would think of with the skin, acne, warts, molluscum, psoriasis, eczema any type of rash, any type of lesion. Uh, we see all that, um, some autoimmune type stuff with lupus, um, scleroderma. There's all kinds of stuff that walks in the door. Cosmetic, doing things like Botox, filler, lasers, chemical peels, and then surgical. I do pretty much all of my own biopsies, excisions that I feel comfortable with, um, which is where if somebody has a skin cancer on their arm, I'm able to cut around it, take it out, put in stitches. And um, it gives it a nice mix, having a little bit of everything throughout my day. I see about 35 patients a day, which is a lot. Uh, for Derm, we move very quickly. We're very focused on what the patient's coming in for, focused on the skin. Um, so sometimes a patient will have one spot they're worried about. I can tell them it's fine and they're happy with that. Um, other times I will have more complicated patients who have you know, a history of melanoma and psoriasis and they're on a bunch of medicines and we've got to figure some stuff out and that it all kind of balances out. But we see babies and kids, we see elderly patients get a little bit of everything, um, but very procedural, very fast paced. And I do work part time now. So after I had my daughter, who's five, um, I worked for a year full time after having her and I'd been a PA at that point for five years. And then I decided I wanted to go part time to have a little bit more time at home. And now I work two days a week. So I work on Mondays and Tuesdays from about eight to four thirty and um, might check check in on the computer, answer some messages throughout the week. And then I just had my second baby who's five weeks old. And so it's nice that I'll get to be home with him a little bit. Um, and that's, that's kind of the cool thing about being a PA and 
after you've paid off your loans and kind of established yourself, you can make some choices to move around um, in those different areas. Um, so one of the reasons I'm talking to you is after I graduated from PA school, uh, it was kind of, I was kind of in a limbo where I wasn't used to not having an assignment or a test. And so I started thinking like, oh, maybe I'll like start blogging and people were asking me about becoming a PA and I felt like it was still, there were so many, so many questions and it was still so complicated. So I started just writing about what I did, which was my website called the PA platform. Um, and it's been really cool. I've been doing that now for the last nine years and it's turned into just a great community. And I, we consider ourselves a resource for pre-PA students, current PA students, um, but really I, I think more of a community. Um, we have blog posts, newsletters, webinars, videos, podcasts, a lot of stuff. Um, basically, if you ever have a question about becoming a PA, if you just look up the PA platform, personal statement, something will pop up. Um, we, we do offer kind of personal statement review and mock interviews. And then um, we're working with MAPT, which is a really cool tool for all pre-health students. Um, it's like an application tracker where you can put in your experience. It has the best GPA calculator that I've ever used. It's way better than the one on my website. Um, so that's a really cool new resource that I recommend. Um, and we have a Facebook group too called the Pre-PA Club, um, which again, lots of questions. I mean, it's, it's a great community in there too. So those are some resources for y'all if you are kind of on that Pre-PA path or even just thinking about the profession. You're never going to hear me say the like PA is the best profession and better than anything else. I don't necessarily think that. I think for some people and for myself, it was a great choice and I'm very happy with it. I just want you as a student and somebody who's considering being in the healthcare field to look into it if it's something that interests you or maybe tell your friends about it if they're undecided and not sure what they want to do. Um, so I have this little application timeline that I just wanted to show you, and then we'll get into some Q&A. But this is on our website, too. Um, you may want to screenshot or take a picture of this if you're like, oh, I just need like a quick little, you know, to do. Oh, Sam, go to dad, please. No, I'm sorry. I love you, but I'm doing something. Please go to dad. Here she is. Yeah. Okay, go. Can you shut that door? Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. Just got home from camp. Um, but all right. So normally in my meeting, she can pop in. But on the application timeline, um, you my very first thing I recommend if you want to be a PA is start looking into programs, like figure out what you're gonna need before you start taking a bunch of classes so that you can have an idea and you're not, I don't want to say wasting time, but Sometimes you can waste time and money on things that just aren't necessary, or if like one school requires it, you've got to figure out if you really want to take that class. So start with a list of programs and then get into figuring out those classes. Keep, if you're at the beginning of your journey, especially keep your focus on your grades, even if that means taking a little bit longer to apply to PA school or to get experience, you really want to make sure that your grades are as high as possible just to make it easier on yourself because GPA does play a big role in this application process. Um, patient care experience, most schools will have a set minimum, 500 hours, 1,000 hours, 2,000 hours. Um, a good rule of thumb is 2,000 hours is equal to a year of working full-time. So if a school requires 1,000 hours, that's about a year of working part-time or half a year of full-time. So again, you can kind of plan out what you're going to need to do. Um, shadowing is recommended for most programs. Volunteering, showing that you are committed to your community. Um, I think we can all say like, we want to help people, but unless you've actually done that and shown that you want to do that, why would they believe you? So you really want to get, get out there, find something you're passionate about and spend time doing. Um, the GRE is the most common test that's required for PA schools, so you do want to try to um, see if that's something you're going to have to take. I've found that schools on the East Coast require it more than the West Coast, but it can vary, and there is a new test called the PA CAT, which is more knowledge-based that some schools are requiring also. Join our Facebook group. 
<laughs> and then once you get into when you're applying, that's when you're going to start working on your personal statement. Think about who your letter of recommendation writers are going to be. This is a very brief, like surface level overview. Um, and we can, you know, dive in if y'all have questions about these specifically. PA school applications called CASPA, that's the universal application. It opens every April. And for PA schools, most of them do have rolling admissions. So you want to try to get your application submitted by May, June, if possible, because interviews this year, we've seen them starting very early, uh, June, July, August. Um, but fall is when a lot of those interviews happen and then hopefully acceptances. All right, so here's my info. And I think Michael said yeah, he was gonna send that out also. And we can jump into some questions with you guys. Right, thank you, Samantha, for the amazing presentation. And honestly, um, yeah, really appreciate your insights. And honestly, like, I feel like honestly, considering to pursue a PA career might actually solve a lot of like pre health students questions, because like, that's kind of a road that's like underlooked, but overlooked constantly. But like, honestly, it could, could be some of the designated road for some people, honestly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And let's just dive into our Q&A for today. Um, so there's an attendee who asked that like, as someone who's still discerning whether a medical related career is something for him or her, um, do you think one's career calling is a feeling that you get or is it based on more something of that you experienced? Um, I, I think it can be both. And that's where I feel like just shadowing and talking to as many people as possible is very helpful. We have the luxury now of having all these virtual shadowing that you can watch. And even ones on YouTube, you can go back and see just to see what's going to be the best fit for you. Um, that's something that I've, I've seen in the PA profession, specifically just because a PA, let's say in emergency medicine, can look very different. So I have two friends who both work in the ER as PAs and their jobs, if they describe them to you, you wouldn't even think it was the same position. But on paper, they have the same title. So that's where I think you have to just get a broad uh, perspective as much as you can before you make that decision and jump in. Um, I think there are definitely people who are like, I'm going to med school. That's what I was called to do. That's what I want to do. And then I think there are people who are like, I could be happy doing this, but I also have other interests that I want to explore. And there are ways to put those things together. I mean, if you look at me, I'm a PA, but I also have this interest in like business and marketing. So I created an online business and website and I enjoy learning about that. So that's more of my like, creative outlet. So I haven't had to give that up but I'm able to do both. And so I think, you know, you have to decide what what's going to work best for you. But the best way to do that is just talking to a lot of a lot of people and then going to conferences like this and, and getting to see all these different professions and in, in one place is very helpful. I would say I definitely echo that just like talk to more people and learn about others perspectives, especially who are already like experiencing that as a career and maybe there will go your career calling moments. Okay, yeah. so our next question is that like, so from your perspective, would you say that there is a downside or disadvantages of being a PA versus like if you were to choose a career to pursue a doctor's career? And what would you say that like there's like about the advantage of being a PA? I guess versus a doctor also. Yeah. Um, so disadvantage, I, I mean, for me, I will say there was a point um, in my career, maybe three years in, I, and I just remember this very specifically where we had a patient come in and she was a young patient and she had this kind of funny rash. And um, it was one that I walked in and I was like, this is weird. I'm going to go talk to the doctor. Like, I know I've never seen this. Let me go see if she has any insights. Um, so she came in and she'd been practicing for, I don't know, 16 years or something, uh, came in and she was like, oh my gosh, I've only ever seen this one time in residency. And so we talked about it, learned about it, whatever. And then after that, I was like, oh man, I wish I had residency. Like then I would have seen it. But when I started thinking about it, she had seen that one time in her 16 year career. 
And so I started making my mindset of like these first few years of practice are like my residency. Like I have to seek knowledge. Like I have to go to conferences. I have to read. I have to make sure I'm updated and understand in medicine, you, you reach this point where you just realize you're never going to know everything and no matter how hard you try and it's always changing. Um, and so that was really the only time that I kind of had that thought and then I squashed it pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, I mean, as a PA, you're probably not going to make a doctor's salary in the same specialty. I mean, you're going to make less and that's okay. I mean, that's a preference. Um, you didn't, you know, your loans were probably less and your time invested was less too. Um, an advantage would be it is easier to switch specialties. I'm not going to say that physicians can't switch specialties. It's just more difficult. So as a PA, you don't have to go through that whole residency again to switch specialties. If I wanted to go work in cardiology, it would be as simple as me finding a cardiology job, going there, training, refreshing my knowledge and everything, and then working in that specialty. I could even work in cardiology at the same time as I work in dermatology if I wanted to. Um, so that's kind of one of the cool advantages of the profession. Um, there's a lot of job security. If I wanted to move somewhere else and my husband was um, interviewing for residency, I, we might have had to move and I wasn't worried about getting another job. I knew I could find another job, no problem. Moving, moving somewhere else. Great. Okay, next up, we actually have a really interesting question. So there, this person is a rising senior and she, I think she, yeah, um, is trying to decide a career between MDDO versus PA. And she has a similar like situation to yours, actually. Like she's with the partner who is going to med school and be, like having a family is very important to her so that like she gets like the flexibility or the comparatively more flexible um, work life balance of a PA career might be more suitable. And what are your perspectives on it? Yeah, I mean, I think you have to look at if you what you're going to be happy with. Um, for me, I just never felt like I needed to be in that doctor role or like be the only one or I mean, I work independently. So my patients, when they come to see me, they're on my schedule. They know they're seeing me. I only go get the physician if there's a question or something weird, or honestly, if it's a cool case and we just want to look at it together. But, um, you know, I never felt like, oh, I want to own a practice, even though some PAs in some states can own practices now. I, I never had that desire. Um, and so I think you just have to look at those things and just make sure you're going to be happy. I think shadowing would be a great option for you. Um, that being said, I just truly believe that like work-life balance and all of that is a choice. So at my first practice, I worked more than any of the doctors. So I worked more than anyone else there um, when it came down to days and hours. At my practice now, I work less than anyone else there. And so you have to decide and, and you are going to sacrifice things. You're going to sacrifice money to work part-time. I felt like because I'd paid back my loans, I'd put in five years that I could do that. I could go to part-time and be okay with that. And it allowed for me to have a better family life. So my husband worked seven on seven off. If I was working five days a week, we would only really see each other four days out of the week that one of us wasn't working. It just didn't make sense. And so I think it depends on what your husband wants to do or your future partner um, and what you want to do and what you want that to look like. Um, and those were considerations we had with him also in choosing a specialty and choosing whether or not to do fellowship, um, looking at kind of what do we want, what do we want our family life to look like and what are we going to be happy with and what's enough? Like you can, you can, I could take on shifts and make more money and, you know, as a doctor, you can make more money and take on more shifts. But for us, it was what what's enough that we're happy and we can, you know, have more quality time at home. Um, so those are conversations that I think you could start having to figure out what's going to be best. That's so totally kind of a self conversation that one needs to have with themselves, like before they kind of like automatically decide on one option. But yeah, thank you so much for the answer. And then the next question is actually really relevant. Like speaking of shadowing opportunities with PAs, um, do you have any suggestions on like any advices on finding those shadowing opportunities? Yeah, that's probably, that's probably one of the most common questions I get. 
Um, so first of all, just don't stop looking. If somebody says no, just keep keep looking, keep asking. Eventually somebody will say yes. Um, the best place to start is any connections you have, even if they are distant connections. And I would say, tell everyone that you want to be a PA, be a doctor, be whatever, um, because you just never know who is going to be able to help you. So for example, the PA that I shadowed that I mentioned, um, I was able to connect with her because my dad told, again, my dad likes to help. Um, my dad told his boss that I was thinking about PA school and his boss at work, he was a teacher um, at a technical college, his boss at work or supervisor knew somebody who worked at a local hospital who was like over hiring. And he was like, I think he knows PAs. And so I connected with him and he was able to get me set up with this PA. Um, and then eventually that same person was able to get me a job as a CNA. So use your connections, even if they seem random or distant, tell everybody, you know, like what you want to do and they may be able to help you out. Uh, and so that's, first of all, if you don't have anybody, don't know anybody, cold calling can be very helpful. I've done some, uh, Instagram reels and TikToks on this, but, um, the person that you want to try to talk to is the office manager. So if you can leave a message for them, you're going to get a lot further than just leaving a message usually with the front. Um, looking into hospital programs and seeing if they have any formal programs you can sign up for to get shadowing. If you start by volunteering, if you don't have connections, if you start volunteering in a hospital or a clinic, you can meet PAs and people who can help you connect with other people. Um, and then the other thing specifically for PAs that may work for other professions too would be get involved with your state society. So like we in Georgia have GAPA, the Georgia PA Association. Um, and they always need help, like even help answering emails or with the conference or whatever. But if you can get connected there, you're going to make a lot um, it's going to help your networking and you'll make a lot of new introductions to PAs who can probably help you out. Um, and once somebody knows you, they're much more likely to let you shadow than if they have no idea who you are. So if you can can make make those connections, start those relationships, you're going to be more likely to get those shadowing opportunities. Yes. And with that being said, if you're in this session today, you're in a great spot to start networking and connecting. But yeah, thank you so much for the answer. And I guess the next question is sort of, um, oh, this is a common one as well, because like many of like pre-health students are actually considering a surgical career. That's where sort of like, oh, they're wondering like, if I'm a PA, am I able to like perform any surgeries on your own? Or like, yeah, just like, as a PA in surgical derm, how involved is the PA and like in the surgery process in general? Yeah, so it'll vary for sure, depending on what you do um, and how much experience you have, your relationship with the physician you work with, your collaborating physician, um, all of that plays a role. I have friends in dermatology. So even in my practice, just for an example, we have one physician and three PAs. Um, two of us are part-time and one is more full-time. Um, so one of the PAs does not do surgery at all. She does not do cosmetics at all. She strictly is, wants to do medical derm. Um, the other PA and I both do surgical procedures, which in dermatology, like these are non-sterile procedures in our office. Um, but some of them can be rather large skin cancers. Um, so for me personally, I don't really enjoy cutting skin cancers off on the face. So let's say somebody comes in with one on their face, depending on age, depending on all these factors, um, I'll decide if I want to do it. Usually not. I'll ask the physician I work with if she wants to do it. If she does not, then we refer out to Mohs and plastic surgery some. Um, if it's one that I decide to do, then yes, I do that whole procedure from start to finish. I have a um, medical assistant with me to assist, but I do that in the office. Um, I have friends who have worked in vascular surgery, um, doing things like vein, vein um, harvesting, and a lot of times they're doing those procedures pretty much on their own, but it just varies a ton. But if you want to do surgery as a PA, there are opportunities. Are you going to be doing open heart surgery by yourself? No, it's probably not. But um, a lot of times PAs are very involved in like starting and closing procedures. So they'll be the one kind of starting 
and then a surgeon comes in, they do the procedure together, and then um, the PA might close up. So that is actually very interesting. I feel like many people don't really have a grasp of like what actually the career of the PA entails in when it comes to like surgical operations. But yeah, thank you so much for the insights. And our next question will be that like, so there's attendees that the like, he or she have seen some PAs talk about like opening their own med spa. And, you know, they, they know that like PAs must have a supervising physician. And they're just wondering, like, how does that process look like? Or if is like, is it even possible to your perspective? Yeah, so it's state dependent. So um, Georgia, it's it's pretty difficult to own a, a practice as a PA. Um, Florida, you can. California, you can. It just depends on the state. So um, a lot of times the way these look like is you would have a collaborating physician who basically kind of checks in, like oversees things, may sign some of your charts and things, and y'all may like, talk if, if there's an issue, but essentially you're the owner of that spa or place or whatever. Um, and in those states, you may be the owner and you may have a physician who works there under you or for you and, and have that type of relationship. So um, that's more on definitely like the business side, but if that's something that you're interested in, just check the state laws, check the medical board and see if that's something that's an option for the states that you want to be in. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. And our next question is actually, um, about your husband. Um, they're wondering like, does your husband ever consider actually going to PA school like you did or regret choosing medicine? And I guess like, how's his pre-med story? Like what, what made him choose medicine? If you know. Yeah, so that's what, when that first question came up, I mean, he's definitely more of the person who just kind of like went it. his dad was a dentist and he didn't really ever think about that, but he was the one who kind of went in thinking like, I'm like, I'm just going to go do medicine. I'm just going to be a doctor. Like, that's the only thing. And I don't think he ever really considered anything else. Um, and it's funny because even when I... <laughs> went to PA school he he never looked into it um so I don't think he really knew what a PA was because when we I remember after I had graduated and was working um there would be multiple instances where I'd come home and he was studying for something and I'd be like let's study together and we're answering questions and he would go you know that why do you why do you know that you know that or I would come home and say, I did, I cut out a cyst today. I did a cyst excision. I did this. And he's like, you do that? PAs do that? And it really was not until he was in residency. And then now as an attending, working with PAs that he, I think, understood what PAs do and what that role is. Um, because it just wasn't something he considered. So I think he's very happy with his choice. And it is funny, though, because I will see him. Um, or he said at times he'll encourage people if they ask him, like, should I go to medical school? He'll be like, yes, but you might want to look at PA too. And so he does have that perspective of like, PA is a great career too, maybe consider it. Um, but he's kind of like me, like he's never going to tell anyone, you know, this is for you. You have to do this. You should definitely do this. Like we're both very much like, they're, they're both great. Just look into both and see what you think is the best fit for you. Um, but yeah, I think he's happy with, with his choice. Yeah. I feel like honestly, a good news to our audiences, like, you now is free up that knowledge gap of like, you know, both sides now. So yeah, yeah take advantage of session. <laughs> I've seen both sides, that's for sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I guess this will be our, maybe our last question for today. Um, which is actually really well relevant and practical. So should pre-PA students actually take a gap year after graduation from undergrad program and get their maybe like CNA or EMT license and just like maybe do some like yeah. job on CNA or EMT? Yeah, I mean, if you aren't able to get your experience while you're in undergrad or doing schooling, then yes, like definitely take that time to get that. Um, there are some profession or some pre-health kind of roles that don't require a license or certification and it's, it's state dependent, but like here in Georgia, um, for medical assistance, you don't necessarily have to be licensed or certified. So like right now I have a pre-PA medical assistant who works with me who is not certified. 
So if you can find one of those jobs in like a private practice where they're willing to train you, those tend to be really, really good um, positions. Um, but CNA, EMT are both great. Those give you a lot of options, um, even to be like a patient care tech or to be an ER tech um, and do some different things. Um, so yeah, so definitely something to look into. Um, a while back, I did a poll on Instagram just because I was curious. And I said, you know, for people who have taken a gap year, whether you planned it or not, do you regret your gap year? Like, is that something you wish you didn't do? Um, and out of 500 people, only like four or five said yes. And the rest said no, that they did not. And that's what I found, like interviewing people on podcasts and things. Everyone says how valuable their gap year was for just making them feel more ready to go into school. Um, so I don't think it's a bad thing at all. And again, I had like a gap semester, but it was different because I was already kind of accepted um, to my program. But I I would definitely um, don't think it's, it's nice to have that little break before you jump into PA school craziness. Yeah, I wonder actually like uh, among your like, I guess your peers who attended like PA school with you, um, did they like, to your knowledge, like how many of them like actually did CNA or EMC, something that's like non, just like PA specific jobs? Yeah, so we had 44 in my class. Um, I think, and, and the school, I will say the school I went to did not have a high patient care hour requirement. They only required um, like a hundred hours. So some people didn't have a lot of experience or most of it was like volunteering, even just from like missions or a local clinic. Um, we had a couple of paramedics in my class. We had a dietitian. Um, I had done CNA. There were definitely a good amount of medical assistance, um, some EMTs, some ER techs, but yeah, we had a good variety. And that's kind of the cool thing about PA school is you do get a, a good mix of people, different ages, different experiences so you can kind of learn from each other that's definitely incredible as well it's like the cross talks happen when you are having kind of a cohort with like diverse backgrounds yeah yeah it's really fun yeah anyway that pretty much sums up our session for today and thank you so much Savannah for your amazing presentation and the Q&A session really appreciate it I'm sure we learned a lot and for people that are in this room so uh right now um we'll transition to um Next session actually is on a presentation on a UCSF program. And before we do that, though, if you're interested in a PA career, feel free to check out um, Savannah's platforms, as well as like shooting any emails when you are like when you want to reach out to her and pre national health. Um, sorry, national pre health community also has a pre health pod. And we actually have an episode on like PA school admission. So feel free to check that out. And I'll see you guys later in another session. Then. And thank you.